What's up everyone, you're gonna see in this video a troubleshooting process that uh, was a bit unorthodox for me. I had run into an issue that I had never seen before and I was suspecting from the get-go that it was a hardware issue. You will, you'll see what it actually was. It's something I didn't expect. I'm sure I'll be called a noob for not knowing this, but I have nothing to hide on this channel. I want you guys to see the problems that I run into myself and uh, the learning curve associated with it because I don't expect everyone to know these things out of the gate and I prefer personally to learn from experience versus learning from a textbook. And uh, I, I was, you know, learning from textbooks for years, so it's nice to be able to uh, just kind of have my hands on tech and figure out why things work the way they do in the real world. So uh, with that said, let's get started. Oh, and I have, yeah, can't forget, good old head mount. Thermal Grizzly's Carbonaut pads offer peace of mind, ease of installation, and industry standard performance in a market crowded with mediocre thermal compounds. Our own testing confirms that they conduct heat appropriately and provide a safe and consistent membrane between the dye or IHS and cooler. Best of all, you can grab them in several sizes and reuse them as many times as you'd like. Carbonaut pads are peace of mind in my book and they're very consistent and that's why I use them for CPU testing. Check them out via the link below. Okay, so it is launch day for the 9900K S, which is the special edition 9900K, supposed to have higher boost frequencies. And I was planning to test all of that out in this video, and I might still show you some results, although I might save all of that for a separate video as well. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. Uh, but I wanted to vlog this because I am having issues with the PC booting. So this is a slightly different test system than the one I typically use, and that's because this is a Z390 motherboard instead of Z370. Could have made this work with a Z370 board, but we would have needed to flash the BIOS, and it's just more work, and I feel like it would be uh, a more fair comparison to test the KS on a Z390 chipset, which is what that chip was intended to run with. So, Pepsi, are you, are you serious? Are you serious? Can you, can you not make noise? You can stay there, just don't, yeah, don't do weird stuff. So uh, the, the PC keeps freezing and I have tried resetting over and over. In fact, I actually tried physically resetting here on the board and that for some reason is not working. I can boot using this method, but once the PC freezes, uh, I cannot reboot the system. We're gonna go ahead and drain everything. All right. Reconnect the power supply, power back on. And I just wanna show you guys what happens. Uh, by the way, bio settings are set to stock, auto, everything. Uh, I even tried disabling MCE. I have a few suspicions and a few um, different things I wanna try right off the bat. First of all, I'm just running an eight pin up top. Typically that's okay. This extra four pin here is for uh, serious overclocking and the like, uh, but usually you can get by with just the, the eight pin install. What I'm gonna try to do first is uh, include the extra four pin and see if that fixes the random freezing. Although typically if it's a power delivery issue, the system just shuts off, it doesn't freeze. Might be the graphics card, but I've used this graphics card a ton. You can see it's getting power. All of our connections on the power supply side are fine. And uh, we're using the same 860 Evo SSD. Um, and you can see it just froze again. So this is a recurring problem with the hardware in its current state. And uh, we're gonna make some swaps out. I wanna show you guys what I'm going to do to figure this out because I honestly don't know. I mean, the only thing that is new to this system is the CPU. And if the CPU was bad, I don't feel like it would just be freezing like that. So we'll try a few things. Let's try the cable first. Okay, let's see here. Do I have the extra four pin for the... Yes, I do. Okay, let's try this first. I would be very surprised if this was why the system was freezing, like I said before, even on AMD platforms. Uh, when you, even if you have like two eight pins, usually you can get by with just one eight pin and you know, stick to conventional overclocking. It's really for LN2 and again, uh, more serious OCs. So let's try this again. I'm gonna power on the system and uh, let's go ahead and enter the BIOS just so I can show you guys that everything is set to auto. It's all stock. We do have XMP enabled. I highly doubt that is the issue. XMP and Intel play 
pretty well together. This isn't like first gen Ryzen or anything. I'll disable it just to be on the safe side, but yeah, I, um, I'm really stumped with this one. I've never had a system just randomly lock up and not do anything else, like not BSOD or shut down. It just stays frozen where it is. Potentially a graphics card issue. I don't, I'm thinking about it. it. It could be just a bad card. Um, yeah, it, it did it again. And uh, you can see I get no response from the keyboard. I mean, the, the graphics card's lit up. I don't hear any anything weird going on. Not that there's any moving parts inside the fans, but um, the fans are supposed to stop. These This is the, the auto stop function when the card is not under a heavy load to keep the system quiet. I will try swapping uh, this 8-pin VGA for this one, see if this is the issue. And that's really all I can think of. Cables are fine, there's nothing, uh, yeah, nothing hanging out of any of the connectors. It's really strange. There's nothing else hardware-wise that's um, standing out as a red flag to me. Um, RAM seems fine. We could swap that, that'd be a quick swap to confirm. CPU cooler, I'm pretty sure that the CPU is not overheating, it's not under load, uh, and it was mounted correctly. Are we gonna get any? Yep, still froze. Uh, so, let's swap the card, then we'll swap RAM. I really, you wanna swap RAM first, because if most of the time, at least for me, if I have an issue with a, C, with a, a system acting bizarre, you swap RAM, and, and or at least try different slots and you'll be fine. These actually might be in the wrong slots, optimally speaking, but there shouldn't be this issue. Um, and then after that, we'll just reinstall the operating system. And I mean, I literally just installed this. It was working fine for about an hour or so, hence why you see some games and stuff on here. But anyway, all right, killed power, and we're gonna swap the graphics card first. This just doesn't look like a RAM issue to me, so. We're gonna try the graphics card. Uh, really doesn't matter what we use. Let's use a 2060. There we go. Yeah, okay, not the graphics card. I know the 2060 works. Just pulled that out of a fresh system and the system is uh, still frozen. You can do nothing here, can't even Control Alt Delete, just gonna have to hard reset again. Let's swap RAM this time. And just doing this kind of provisionally, I'm pretty sure it's not the RAM. Uh, it's probably just a corrupt OS. And uh, that's gonna suck because I have to reinstall everything again. But what can you do? Okay, I am sitting on the struggle bus right now. The, the operating system install process also froze. So now I am stuck with, I don't even, I don't even know what to do at this point. I guess I can just try swapping the drive. Maybe it's just a bad drive, but um, yeah, even, even getting lockups when trying to reinstall Windows, which pretty much cuts me off at the storage drive. Unless it's the CPU, it's the only other thing we haven't swapped yet. I know this board works because I've used this board personally, like in my personal rig. I know the power supply works. We've used this in almost every graphics card and CPU comparison video. Uh, so that leaves the CPU and the drive. Those are the last two things. I, we use the drive in almost every video too though. That's what I don't understand. Like how is the CPU, how could that cause this? You know, just random lockups like this. I suppose I could swap the CPU first, um, but uh, that's honestly gonna be a bit harder to do, getting this thing removed. And uh, if it's a dead CPU, I mean, that kind of that kind of cuts me off at the knees. There's not much more I can do at that point with uh, the KS review video. So I'm gonna swap the drive first, give the chip the benefit of the doubt. And at that point, we'll have literally changed everything except for the motherboard and power supply, which again, I know both of these work. So hopefully, yeah. Hopefully that goes away. And you guessed it, same problem. Stuck at 72% this time. You can see I'm not getting any mouse action, so this is completely locked up. And uh, I have a, a Corsair MP600 in here now, which again, I know works because I've used this in multiple systems in the past. It's a PCI Gen 4 drive. It works with Gen 3, it'll just run at Gen 3 speeds. So wanna make that clear. Uh, so it is not the drive. The, 
I, definitely not power supply. Power supply issues don't don't, in my experience, cause OS lockups. Uh, so I'm thinking it's a CPU at this point. Uh, yeah, I I'm definitely suspecting it. So what I'm gonna do is swap the 9900KS with a, uh, I guess an older gen Intel CPU. I have I think an 8600K, another one of those laying around. I also have an 8700K. Uh, so we could try either of those, see if it works with this board and we can actually post or at least install an operating system on the drive. Oh, there we go, blue screen. DPC watchdog violation. I have not seen this yet. This is the first time that's popped up, which is interesting. We got a blue screen of death trying to install Windows. How much worse can it get than that? Um, so yeah, I if it's DPC watchdog, I'll have to look that up. Usually watchdog has something to do with CPU, so... Um, yeah, let's swap the CPU out and just see if we can get it to post and run normally. And if that's the case, we can rule out the motherboard being the issue as well as the power supply. Although again, I think the power supply is running just fine. Uh, and uh, confirm for whatever reason that the KS is not playing nice with the rest of my hardware, which is no good for a launch day review. Okay, so I've swapped the CPU for, I need to mark my chips. I don't know which one it is. I think it's an i5-8400 possibly 8700K. Anyway, it's a different chip than the one that apparently wasn't working and that the cooler's just sitting on top of the chip. It's not gonna be stressed. I don't recommend doing this. I'm just, yeah, I just wanna see if it actually posts or not. So again, just wanna see if we can install the operating system and boot into it. If we can, then that rolls out the motherboard, singles out this CPU. Really hoping it isn't a bad chip, but you never know. Every now and then, just, Randomly you get one that doesn't work and seeing as though this was sourced directly from Intel kind of hard for me to believe It's a bad chip, but uh, this installation process seems to be working uh, We haven't gotten a lockup yet. We're at 89% 90% of course We'll boot into the OS and see how stable it is in the long run But uh, right now it's looking pretty good with whatever the CPU is uh, in here I will also try updating the motherboard BIOS which uh, I didn't do I I'm pretty sure it's not required, but uh, I'll do it for good measure just to rule out any potential incompatibilities. If it works with the 9900K uh, with the current BIOS, I figured it would also work with the 9900KS, but again, we'll try it. But uh, yeah, this seems to be working so far. Operating system is installed on the older CPU. So if you have a motherboard and you wanna update drivers or update the BIOS for that specific model, just Google the model, click the motherboard vendor website link for that model. It'll be sent to a splash page like this. And then you click, typically it's called the support tab. Click that and you will see several utilities here. Uh, we have uh, BIOSes and plenty of other drivers and things. Uh, but you can see F8 version here optimizes for Intel Core i9-9900KS CPU. This was uh, unbeknownst to me. I had no idea that you would need to update the BIOS for a Core i9-9900KS. I just assumed it was a 9900K that was binned, but there are again, um, small variances in the architecture itself to address security vulnerabilities internally without the requirements, uh, without the requirements of uh, BIOS updates to mitigate those uh, in software. So this is why you will likely need to update your BIOS for a stable 9900KS system. This is pretty much user error here. It just had, I just assumed it was a binned 9900K, but there's a little more to it than that. We'll talk about it in my actual full review, but uh, yeah, as you'll see shortly, flashing this BIOS and restarting the system no problems at all. And I obviously can't show you performance figures just yet because the performance embargo has not lifted. This is technically the unboxing day, although I did clear this video with Intel. They said this wouldn't be an issue as long as I didn't show you performance. So anyway, thanks for watching the little troubleshooting video here. I feel pretty silly for not knowing that there was a BIOS that needed to be updated, but at least you got to see how I troubleshoot, it of course is going to, I really shouldn't place this on top of the PSU. Uh, it's gonna vary from system to system, from issue to issue. Uh, but if you can cut out all of the hardware problems by swapping components, then you can probably narrow it down to something in software, either the Windows 10 operating system itself, which we also determined was not the issue, uh, and potentially an incompatible BIOS, which was one of the last ditch efforts that uh, 
that I pursued to fix the problem. And sure enough, we've got a stable system now. So now I can resume testing of the 9900KS. Stay tuned for that in our next video. I'll upload that Friday, even though the embargo I think is a day earlier than that, uh, just because we upload on Monday as well as Friday. So to be consistent there uh, and also not to compete with other tech YouTubers who will be doing the exact same thing. I will presumably. Thanks for watching. I hope you like the vlog style. I don't know. I just uh, figured this would be the easiest uh, way to film this video and you get to see firsthand how I troubleshoot hardware and I guess in this case software. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.